to our Vesper service, our last one. consider this an omen. This morning, every Sunday morning I lay in bed and listen to music and the spoken word with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And this morning, there was an anthem sung called, Home is a Special Kind of Feeling. And I thought about it, it was beautiful. And I thought about where do I feel the most home? If it's not with my family and my friends, I'm most at home and happy making music with my choir. And so I imagined, I envisioned our first Sunday back, our choir singing, home is a special kind of feeling because we are home. So you know what? I got on the internet and I ordered that anthem. <laughs> I'm going to, or, I ordered that anthem in my mind when we can get back together again a couple of weeks ahead of time. The choir is going to start practicing. Home is a special kind of feeling. We're going to open up with that. And it gave me such hope. You know, it just gave me a love in my heart and hope. And I wanted you to know that. It gives us something to look forward to, especially with the vaccination that they're talking about. You know, the, the end might be in sight sooner rather than later. So, home is a special kind of feeling. I would invite you to stand and let's sing for the healing of the nations. Please be seated.
I want to say I am marveled at Jared's courage to be wearing shorts and a t-shirt in this windy weather, but <laughs> um, I had to throw on another layer real quick before I came up here. Um, please join with me in the responsive Thanksgiving litany uh, that is on both sides of the uh, worship handout. We gather this Thanksgiving season with friends and family for a new way of doing Thanksgiving. By socially distanced gatherings or Zoom gatherings or something altogether extra special and new. We will all remember the year of 2020 and how we found new ways to give thanks and praise God. Thanksgiving as we celebrate it it is a time of sharing food and fellowship. A time to share with loved ones and a time to reach out and share with those in need, whether physical or spiritual, and a time to give thanks. We give thanks for the farm workers who pick our food, who toil in the rain and cold and under Virginia's scorching sun. We recognize the legacy of slavery and our treatment of farm workers who remain exempt from state minimum wage protection and are often housed in crowded substandard housing, offering little privacy and risking spread of disease in this moment of COVID-19. We give thanks for the poultry processing workers and other food workers who have gotten the food from the fields to our stores. We know the danger these essential workers have endured for our food. <clears throat> we give thanks for grocery store workers, more essential workers, who have made sure we could purchase food on a regular basis. We will remember to thank our grocery store workers. We give thanks for those who prepare our food at home, at restaurants, or at soup kitchens. We recognize the love that goes into preparing our food. We give thanks to God from whom all blessings flow. As Psalm 107 verse 1 says, Give thanks to God. For God is good. God's love endures forever. This Thanksgiving, we give thanks for those who picked, processed, sold, and prepared our food. And we give thanks to God for the food for our bodies and the food for our souls. Bless this, bless this food. Bless these people. Bless this Thanksgiving. Amen. The prophet Isaiah says in his first chapter, in the middle verses, through the message. My friends, quit your worship charades. I cannot stand your trivial religious games. Monthly conferences, weekly Sabbath, special meetings, 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 meetings. I cannot stand any more of it. Meetings for this, meetings for that. I hate them. You've worn me out. I'm sick of your religion, your religion, while you go right on sinning. When you put on your next prayer performance, I will be looking the other way. No matter how long or loud or often you pray, I will not be listening. Do you know why? Because you have been tearing people to pieces. Your hands are bloody. You need to go home and wash up. You need to clean up your act. You need to sweep your lives clean of your evil doings so I don't have to look at them any longer. Say no to wrong. Learn to do good. Work for justice. Help the down and out. Stand up for the homeless. Go to bat for the defenseless. The prophet Micah says in these popular words in the Church of the Brethren in chapter 8, But God has already made it plain on how to live, what to do what God is looking for in men and women. It is quite simple, really. Do what is fair, 
and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love and do not take yourself too seriously. Take seriously God. Attention, God calls out to the city. If you know what is good for you, you will listen. So listen, all of you, this is serious business. I've been thinking about what it means to be thankful. During this time of pandemic, just a month ago, my family and I had planned to host Thanksgiving in our home with my parents and two of my five, four brothers and their respective families. Two days later, after making that decision, we changed our minds and realized that perhaps we need to be better stewards of our lives and our individual families. It was a difficult decision to make, as many of you have also had to make difficult decisions to not host traditional family thanksgivings in your own homes or to go to your other's homes. I've heard stories from friends of mine who are planning to attend gatherings where 50 or more people will be gathering. It saddens me to hear that. As I think about this invisible virus that continues to bombard our country and the world, just this past week, the United States over, had over 250,000 deaths. I had to look that up because I couldn't comprehend how many people that truly is. The city of Roanoke and Roanoke County have almost exactly 200,000 people in the population. So that means more than the immediate area of people in our, what many of you call home, have died. What is it we can be thankful for? What is it that we can confess in our own continuation of doing the things that we have always done. I think about the words of the prophet Isaiah calling that we have been tearing people to pieces and our hands are, blo are bloody. While the virus is not a bloody act, our actions kill others. Our lack of compassion for the other person kills others. Family members have had to isolate themselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I have friends that I've met in the past couple of years that I have lived here in Roanoke who have not been able to leave their home because their bodies are that much more susceptible and at risk. They might not even be over the age of 65. They might just have various diseases that cause their body to be that much more susceptible. And I wonder about how I can continue to be thankful to God it is difficult to think about all of the abundance of who God is. We think about the names as Sister Patricia began our time earlier this afternoon. All of the many names of God that we know God by. I go a little bit further. I think about the very character of who God is in my own life and in the lives of those who I interact with in a variety of ways, daily, weekly, I think about how we continue to perpetuate systems of injustice in our communities. I am grateful to be a part of a faith community that is looking to alleviate hunger, who looks for creative ways and has been for the past, I believe, nine to 10 years of journeying with families as they overcome their own uh, generational poverty walking with individuals, hearing their stories, sharing out of our abundance of money, out of our abundance for clothing and furniture. And all of these things that we have to be thankful for, I continue to cry out. I continue to hear the cries of those who are just looking for a leg up in their own lives. I saw a picture just this morning of a food line, of a food line to a food pantry. It was a mile of cars waiting in line to receive just a basket of food. I have no idea how many cars that is even. It just boggles my mind that that many people are just looking for a box of food. Much like these boxes of food that are at my feet here that have been gathered by this congregation to support a local ministry for their food pantry. I think about the, our own pantries and what they look like. 
I think about the grocery stores and all of the food that is on those shelves. Sometimes they are empty and sometimes there is more than we know what to do with them. Having worked in the grocery store in my high school and college years, I know how much food is wasted. I know how much is thrown away because of dented cans, moldy bread, and an expiration date that is decided by a government institution. But even in the midst of that, there is an abundance that we have from God. It is an abundance of love, mercy, and even to do justice to our neighbors that do not look like us, that do not dress like us, and for most part, for many, do not speak the same language or have the same upbringing as we do. It is out of that injustice that we are called to be mindful of our thankfulness and the bounty that we have been given as people. Yes, we can be thankful for what God has given to each of us, but that thankfulness requires an action. It requires an action to serve and to give to others what we have much of. God, as Micah has reminded us, calls us to be fair and just to our neighbors, to be compassionate and loyal in our love to them. That is something that we have received from God and that God charges each of us to do in turn for all that we encounter in our lives. Thanks, excuse me, Thanksgiving is a wonderful tradition for many of us. I remember waking up on the Friday after Thanksgiving after having worked on my Christmas list to my grandmother, having pie for dessert, and wondering about who's going to get that last piece of pie. But I also imagine children who have never had that experience themselves. I think about the opportunities and the memories that I have that maybe I need to share with others, to share in justice, that it will go to the down and out that I am called and charged to stand up for those whose homes do not look like mine, who don't have the skills and the responsibility or even the knowledge of how to replace a window pane, how to fix a leaky faucet, how to fix a running toilet, or perhaps even to pay for the water because they have fallen behind in their bills. I think about all of these things and many more, and I am continue, uh, continually amazed at the blessing that I have received from God, and I am challenged by the challenge that God gives to me, that I am to share those blessings, not just with my family, not just with my faith community, but also to the stranger, to the neighbor, so that justice may roll down like the rivers of God's love to all of God's people. It is a serious business that we are a part of. It is a serious charge that we have in our lives. May we do so with thankfulness in our hearts for what we have received and with thanksgiving for what we can share to all of God's people. And I hope that you all have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving, even as we are in our own homes. And may we be challenged to share of our bounty with everyone. In God's name, amen. This is one of my favorite songs as we end our time with Beyond a Dying Sun. A new world is coming a new world that God is creating before us as justice continues to roll forth from the overabundance of God. I'd like to just put your arm already standing.
I remember the verse of a chorus from a really popular song on youth ministries. And I will be a living sanctuary for you. And I think about the sanctuary of God as we are bundled by God's love, God's justice, and God's mercy. And I think about the words of our own mission statement, that we are compelled by the Holy Spirit to serve all of God's people. May you do so with God's love, with God's peace, and with the mercy of God in everything you do. And all of God's people shall be in the presence of God as the new world continues to befall us, in front of us, around us, in everything we do. In the glory of God, go forth from here with thanksgiving in your heart to do justice and mercy and love. In God's name we pray. Amen.